Hi everybody. Hey Facebook. Hey Instagram. I welcome to what Fiber at Four. I hope everybody's doing well. Sorry, my microphone keeps moving around. So uh, Instagram people, I'm just going to let you know ahead of time. I'm probably going to focus a little bit more on my Facebook screen. So if you want to switch over to Facebook, you might get a better view there. But I am going to try my hardest to make sure that both interfaces are being included in this. So welcome to our celebration of crochet. And before we get started tonight, I wanted to let you guys know that I did finish another project this week. Not crocheted, however, it is knit. Hey, Gloria. Hey, Mom. So I finished this hat. Hey, Nancy. This is the Ripples Make Waves hat by Casapinka. Uh, for those of you who have not seen this pattern yet, it was in the newsletter that Gail sent out on either Tuesday or Wednesday. And this hat pattern is free. However, Casapinka and Sharon from Security are asking that you would take the money that you would normally pay for the pattern and donate it to one of the three charities that she has listed on her Ravelry page under this pattern. So the pattern would normally be a $6 pattern and they're just asking that you donate that money to charity instead. So it's called, again, Ripples Make Waves. It is knitted, not crocheted. And I'm going to take it off now because I'm getting really, really warm. <laughs> But it's a really cool pattern, and the top of the hat is meant to emulate a sunflower, which is the Ukrainian uh, country, uh, flower of Ukraine. So I hope you guys can check that out. You knitters, you should be making this hat. You crocheters, give it a try. See if you like it. So that was my finished project for the week. So tonight we're talking about all things crochet because it is National Crochet Month. Hooray for March. So... We do have a few announcements. We are hosting a customer trunk show for crochet. So you can either bring your items in and check them in. We have the check-in form on the website and in the newsletter and here in person if you just want to fill it out. And then we'll display your items until March 30th and you can start picking them up on March 31st. You may enter up to three items and the only rule other than the three items is they do need to be made from Longmont Yarn Shop yarn. So when you bring them in, we're just the fill out check in form uh, says just like the name of the pattern, the name of the yarn. So then that way uh, the staff here, if we're asked about it, we can tell people where to find the pattern and the yarn. So those will be on display in the shop here until March 30th. We are also doing a virtual trunk show because we know not everybody can make it in. So are we emailing our photos, Melanie? If you can't make it in, yes. We okay. Try. So if you are not able to bring your trunk show items in in person, email your photos to melanie at longmontyarn.com and we will be posting them to Facebook. So just make sure you let us know the name of the pattern, the designer, the yarn you used, and if you could please write out in your email that we have your permission to post the photo on social media, that would be lovely. So that is the customer trunk show. And then every Wednesday morning this week at, or this month, there's only one Wednesday per week, what am I saying? So every Wednesday this month, both Andy and I are going to be doing uh, demonstration videos on different crochet techniques. So this last Wednesday, Andy was talking about crocheted flowers. If you missed the live, you can review it on our YouTube site. Then this Wednesday, I'm going to be talking about amigurumi because who doesn't love crocheted animals? <laughs> then, what am I forgetting? Oh, uh, the 12th, this coming Saturday, we are doing, uh, Andy and I are teaching beaded chain necklaces in front of the shop on Main Street. So no previous crochet experience required. We will teach you how to make the necklaces. And this is open to all ages. So you can uh, pop in, make a necklace, and just learn your basic chain stitch. And last but not least, crochet month-wise, um, due to some uh, scheduling circumstances that kind of changed around, we are having a different Fiberside chat host on March 20th, and it is my friend Melissa Leitman. Melissa will be talking about different crochet techniques. What techniques? It's going to be a surprise, so I hope you guys can join us on March 30th, and that will be March 30th, March 20th. My goodness, Melanie, I'm having issues tonight. <laughs> March 20th, and it will be 2 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. It's not up on the website yet, but it will be tomorrow morning, so be sure to check back. Alrighty, so my favorite crocheted projects that we have here in the shop. I'm going to go off camera here for a second. 
So the first guy I have, this is the Cliff House Cowl, and this is actually designed by Andy Graves, so our other in-house crochet instructor. And this beautiful cowl only uses two hanks of Malabrigo Rios. The pattern is available on Ravelry, but we also have it in a kit. The kit comes with the two skeins of Rios plus the pattern. So I only grabbed one kit tonight, but this is whole grain and Chris. So there is whole grain and there is Chris. And uh, Andy actually used Chris for the contrast color in her cowl. And this is actually relatively simple. If you're an advanced beginner crocheter, this would be a great project. The waves are just created by combining different size stitches in the rows so instead of it being flat so if you were doing just a single crochet your work would be flat but if you did single crochet half double 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 half double single crochet it would create a wave pattern so that is the cliff house cowl the kit is $39.99 but if you want to come up with your own colors we did just get a restock of rios so yay and that only takes two hanks of the rios so worsted weight yarn. So you could use ultra wool, uh, Allegria Grande, any worsted weight would work for this guy. Going off camera again. <laughs> so this is one of my all time favorite projects and I would love to make it again one of these days. This is the Cooper Gap Cowl and this is by my buddy, Melissa Leapman. This is a crocheted color work cowl and this was designed in mind for those of us who are crocheters and like the look of Fair Isle and want to apply those techniques to our crochet. So this is what she calls Fair Isle crochet color work. And we have these in kits. We have two colorways. So here's a very similar colorway to what I used for here. This one just used a light gray and I used the darker gray in the sample. So the kits are $74.99 and it comes with three hanks of moonshine plus the pattern. So this is amethyst, great passion, and dew. So we've got a lighter purple, a deep purple, and then the contrasting light gray. <laughs> Thanks, Edwina. Yeah, this is a fantastic pattern. And oops, I grabbed, oh no, this is a different color. <laughs> So this is Undersea Birchwood and Prince Charming. So Prince Charming is the gray I used here. So there is Prince Charming, Undersea, which is a super, super dark blue, and Birchwood, which is kind of a pale tan color. Hi, Carrie. So that is the Cooper Gap Crocheted Cowl. So the kit comes with the three hanks of moonshine plus the pattern, so that's $74.99. And this is really fun color work. If you crocheters out there haven't tried color work yet, I recommend you give it a go. It is super, super fun. And it's not as hard as you think it might be. It's really easy. So that is the Cooper Gap Crochet Cowl by Melissa Leapman. Next, I have Toft, and I love Toft. If, um, if y'all don't know the story of Toft, they're the ones who did the Edwards Menagerie books, which are all crocheted critters. And it started with um, the, the person in charge of Toft, just that she didn't know how to crochet. And she taught herself, and now she is this world-renowned crocheter who has created all kinds of garments. She's mostly known for her stuffed toys. And she does both knitting and crocheting, but crocheting is definitely their main focus. So I've got three Toft kits here to show you all. So first of all, we've got the traditional animal kit. This is the medium sized kit, or more along the large size. Uh, they're about six or seven inches tall, depending on the animal. And as you can see here, sorry, I know the number's backwards on your feed. Uh, they are numbered by degree of difficulty. So number one is the easiest with relatively no crochet experience needed. Two is still a beginner crochet, but it's just building on those skills you learn in kit level one. And then they do have a kit level three. Level three typically has a little bit more shaping, a little bit more color change to it. 
So even those would probably still be beginner level, level kind of advanced beginner. So if you love crocheted animals, the, I really recommend these kits. And thanks for the thumbs up and hearts coming across my screen and the waves. Oh my gosh, this is so much fun. Thanks you guys. So the larger kits are $39.99 and all of the topped kits come with the yarn to make the animal. If it has a face on it, which this one doesn't, but if it has a, look at all those hearts, oh my gosh. <laughs> if the uh, creature has an embroidered face on it, they do include the yarn to embroider the, the eyes and the nose on there. Um, it comes with the stuffing for the critter, the crochet hook, the darning needle, and the instructions. And not only that, but these Toft has amazing, amazing online tutorials if you do get stuck. Sorry, I see a question. I made the Alice capelet you are wearing in the colorway and I love it. Oh, thank you. This is one of my favorite projects and I promise I will talk about it in a couple minutes. So this is Lisa the Black Nosed Sheep. And I've also got a couple other creatures on the wall. I just decided to pull this guy because she is so cute. But these kits literally come with everything you need to make the creature except a pair of scissors and a locking stitch marker if, if you like to mark the beginning of your rounds. So the bigger kits are $39.99. And then we've got just one mini kit remaining. This is the mini Emma the Bunny. She is a level one kit, so this is an easier skill kit. And she is $24.99, but she also comes with the yarn to make the bunny, two different colors of yarn to embroider her face, the crochet hook, the darning needle, and the stuffing. So she, again, is $24.99. She is my last mini on the shelf, so if you guys like the mini critters, she's our last one. Until we get more, of course. Uh, the crochet hook, if... It is a very nice crochet hook, but if you decide you want to use one from your own collection, it is a three millimeter crochet hook, which if memory serves is about a size B. And last but not least, these are new to the shop. And I was telling Melanie earlier, this hat may come home with me tonight. This, uh, this is a Toft hat kit. This is a level three kit, which means it's going to have the color changes. It's going to have a little shaping to it. And it also has uh, the ribbing on the brim of the hat, so if you've never done that before, this is a good way to learn. Again, of the level three kits, they are the more higher skill level kits, but they're still technically very beginner. So I would say advanced beginners would be able to do this. And this particular kit, because it is not a stuffed critter, it is a hat, it comes with no stuffing, <laughs> but it comes with all the yarn you need, the crochet hook, the darning needle for your ends, the instructions, and also uh, they also have the online tutorials for these guys too. And honestly, uh, between me and you guys, I did have to use one of the online tutorials for the orca that I was making because I didn't quite understand how they had it written out, like what I needed to do. I found the video on their website and it was extremely clear, extremely helpful. So if you make one of these guys and you get stuck, look on their website because it's their tips and tricks are super helpful and of course if you happen to be in the shop I'd be happy to help you anytime too if you do get stuck so the hat kits are $52.99 I've got the snow leopard and we also have a zebra hat in stock and this is the full size Emma the bunny and keep in mind I'm the one who crocheted this so this is the stitches are super super tight so this is probably about half an inch to an inch smaller than what the bunny's supposed to be. But uh, a little hint for you guys, if you do make amigurumis, it's actually kind of helpful if you do crochet tightly like, like me, because uh, you don't want the stuffing coming out of the critter. So by crocheting tight, tighter, the stuffing stays inside the animal. So it, you don't risk little fingers coming in there and pulling it out. Also too, if you are making a crocheted critter for I would say someone below three years old, I would definitely embroider the face on. I would not use buttons or safety eyes. I would embroider it. So that is my recommendation for amigurumis. 
Next, unfortunately, I do not have a sample of this kit because as soon as I make them, they sell out because this is a super fun pattern. This is the Drexel Beanie and it is by Tony Lipsy. If you are not familiar with Tony Lipsy, I would recommend hopping on Ravelry and checking out her page or uh, her website, I think is tlcrafts.com, T-L as in Tony Lipsy, crafts.com. And this hat is a basic beanie, but it has ribbing and bobbles in it. So I would say probably advanced beginner to intermediate level crochet project. And the kit is $39.99. It comes with the pattern, a uh, Ravelry download of the pattern. And it also comes with two hanks of Barocco vintage, uh, vintage chunky to make the hat plus a coordinating for real palm. So this kit is, this is blush and <laughs> the palm is called Siberian Flying Squirrel. So the yarn is this nice rose color and the palm is green. And for those of you who love purple like me, this is lilacs and panther. So the vintage chunky is this lovely purple color and the coordinating palm is black. And mom says, love Tony, yes. Tony also is the crochet instructor on, I want to say, Knit and Crochet Now, I think is the name of the show. Mom, correct me if I'm wrong. And she teaches lots of different techniques. She's a master at both traditional and Tunisian crochet. She has um, a YouTube channel where she does have tutorial videos. So another great, great crochet instructor to check out if you're wanting to learn. Okay, it is Knit and Crochet Now, and it is on PBS or Create TV, or actually I think it's on both. So I would recommend checking her out, watching the show, just kind of refining your crochet skills a little bit. So she designed that, she is an amazing designer. I'm actually featuring two more of her designs tonight before we're done here. So that is a really fun hat pattern. This is a super, super fun project. This is a fun kit called the Japanese Knot Bag. And this guy utilizes the half double crochet, which Andy and I had a discussion about this one time about how we feel that the half double crochet is a very underutilized stitch. It's really, really pretty. It kind of looks like a half a star when you're done because you draw your loop through all, all the loops on your hook. Plus two, it's a tiny bit taller than a single crochet, but it's just as durable as a single. So um, the smaller stitches do tend to be more durable, which is better for things like bags and slippers, stuff that's gonna get a lot of wear and tear. So this utilizes the half double, so it's got the strength of the half double stitch with the kind of prettiness of the half star or half flower design going on in there. This is actually made of raffia, so raffia is kind of, it's a natural fiber, but it's kind of paper-like paper, paper -like in texture. And so you've got the smaller loop and the bigger loop, so the big loop just goes through the smaller one like that, and that's how you close it. So this is made with a black raffia and a multicolor. And it is a super simple pattern. If you've never crocheted in the round or crocheted spirals before, this is a great pattern to start on. Thanks for the hearts, you guys. So we've got it in two colors. We've got the black and multicolor. And then we've also got an aqua and multicolor. So the kit comes with all of the raffia yarn that you need to make the bag and the pre-printed instructions. Um, I will tell you guys ahead of time that if you make this kit, you are likely going to run out of the solid color. You'll have a bit of the multi left over, but uh, just kind of watch yourself with the solid because it, it, it'll run out a lot faster. So this kit is $44.99 and yeah. Yeah, I caught my cord there. It comes in these spools. They're, oh, another thing when you're making this, the raffia doesn't like to stay on the spool while you're making it. So when you're done working for the night, you need to put it away. I recommend keeping a rubber band handy and wrapping that around the spool that you're using so that the raffia doesn't go flying everywhere but really, really fun pattern. And it's by our friends at Universal Yarn and they write amazing patterns. They are edited so well. There's, I have yet to find even a spelling error on one of their patterns. So 
I highly, highly recommend anything with the Universal brand on it. So that again is the Japanese knot bag, $44.99. And also everything that I am showing you guys here tonight is available on our website under the shopping page at the Fiber at Four category. I also have some things there that I'm not gonna show you tonight just for time's sake. I've got the crochet hooks, the Tunisian hooks and the uh, Tunisian hook cords listed on the sh uh, Fiber at Four shopping page so they're a little easier to find for you guys. Next, we have the Lava Shawl Kit, and this is $46. It comes with three skeins of Malabrigo Rios, another shop favorite in there, and the Ravelry download of the pattern. So there's the picture, but why show the picture when you can see the actual finished product? <laughs> so you've got in the kit, the, it comes with two skeins of the main color, which in this case is the gray, and then one of the contrast, which in this case is the purple. And I'm actually gonna come around to the camera so I can show you guys close up what this stitch pattern looks like. Well, you know, there's two there, so I'll have one on Instagram and one on Facebook. So these guys are made by chaining loops and closing them and then you braid them and crochet them shut. It's a really cool technique and it finishes up really, really nicely. I made the sample and honestly, I think I may utilize the stitch in something else because it is the appearance is so cool and it's really a lot of fun. Oh, thank you. It is beautiful, it is fun. And this is done by crocheting in the back loop, which is how you're getting that texture instead of picking up both loops when you're crocheting. You're only crocheting into half the stitch, so that's why it kind of looks like ribbing. So the kit, again, is $46. It comes with the Ravelry download and then all three skeins that you would need to make that. And the pattern is available on Ravelry, so if you want to choose your own colors or choose your own yarn, you can do that. Um, any worsted weight yarn would work for this. The Malabrigo just, the Rios just shows that pattern so well and we just love the, the deep rich colors that they make. So you see Rios a lot in this shop because we love it that much. Next, I've got a brand new cowl. This is the Asorno Crochet Cowl. It is $39.99. It comes with the Ravelry download of the pattern plus two hanks of the Manos de Uruguay silk blend, which is a wool silk blend. And I just finished the shop sample. Actually, I finished it a couple days ago. It just took a while to try. And this is kind of a shorter, oops, there we go, shorter cowl, but there's enough yarn in that kit where you can make it as tall as you want. For me, this is a, a pretty good size. So it's a simple chain one, skip stitch, single crochet into the next stitch pattern. And I really like the contrast. And in these kits, you're trying to make it so that there's one lighter color and one darker color. So that contrast really, really pops. But you can see here, I only use two different colors, but you can see how it kind of is a little it's tonal, so the color is not solid, solid. So there's a little bit of variation in that gray there. So we have these kits in four different colorways. So this is Bing Cherry and Natural. And the Bing Cherry is kind of a purplish burgundy color. It's really, really pretty. For you, for you green lovers out there, this one is Citric and Olive. So we've got a nice deep dark green with a contrasting a yellow green and then this guy is tomato and briar the briar is this wonderful gray here and the briar actually has almost like a brownish undertone to it so it's not a gray gray it, it's very muted and we contrasted that with this bright tomato red and then the sample I made is out of sea urchin and nickel. So sea urchin is the dark purple and nickel is the lighter gray. And that's how that guy turns out. So again, that is $39.99. You get the Ravelry download of the pattern plus the two hanks of silk blend. 
and this yarn I had never had the opportunity to work with it before and it is super super soft super luxurious and I I will be using this yarn again I can promise you that yeah alrighty what do we have next so this ap this afternoon I almost said this morning but this afternoon we kicked off the Cintia crochet along and I thought I would show that off tonight because it is such an amazing crochet project. So here is the sample. And oh, I love that pattern. It is so pretty. This is made out of Barocco Tiramisu, which is um, it's a worsted weight yarn, but it's kind of like a DK weight yarn held double with a lace weight yarn. It has a very subtle striping effect to it. And it's really fun to work with, and I just love that amazing halo that it gives the yarn. So, as I was telling uh, my crochet along participants today, this stitch right here is, sorry, kind of hard to see. <laughs> it's basically an introduction to making a pineapple stitch. And pineapples are a ton of fun if you have not tried them yet. Highly, highly recommend. It's a great way to, like if you're making a sweater, it's a great way to jazz up the bottom a little bit. Looks wonderful on a shawl. Um, if you remember our anniversary shawl that Andy Graves designed last September, it ha uh, featured pineapple shaped, pineapple aspen leaves, which I know that sounds kind of contradictory around the bottom, but the pineapple is the style of crochet and it looked like an aspen leaf and it was really, really pretty. and. It is in the kit department. It's called the September Shawl, and we actually only have one of those kits left. But if you want to see a fantastic example of pineapple, I would recommend taking a look at that. So the Cintia Shawl is a triangle. Starts at the bottom. You work your way up. So you start out with just a handful of stitches, and then you end up with a bunch of stitches. And this guy, as written in the pattern, takes four balls of the tiramisu, but you can make this guy as big as you want because it's once you get the pattern established there's a six row repeat so you can just keep going and going and going and making it as big as you want so the tiramisu yarn this is the color i used for this guy it's called fig and you can see you know let me come closer to the camera <laughs> so it's got a strand kind of lace weight yarn held double with almost a DK weight yarn there. Sorry, Facebook and Instagram. I'm trying to show you guys both at the same time and it's just not working. And this has a fiber blend of wool, acrylic, mohair, and silk. And don't let the acrylic scare you. It actually helps the yarn have a little body and makes it much easier to crochet with. So that is fig, which is what I used for the shop sample. And I only have the color numbers here on these guys. This is 9205, which I want to say is espresso, but I'm not 100% positive. So that is a black and tan combination. You can really see that tan right there. And the silk and the mohair just give it this wonderful sheen and halo, and it is such a beautiful yarn. It works up so pretty. And then this is 9252, and I think this one's called pistachio, if memory serves. So you can see the color changes there through the yarn. And I meant to write this down, and I completely forgot, but Barocco has an amazing sweater pattern on, on their website and on Ravelry using tiramisu. The body of the sweater is crocheted granny squares, and then the cuffs, the bottom, and the neck uh, the stitches are picked up and knit and ribbing, so it's great for those of us who do both knitting and crocheting. And if I remember the name of the pattern, I will have Melanie put it in the chat line because I completely spaced that. But this yarn is a worsted weight yarn. It is $13.25 per ball, and we are looking at 137 yards there. So for the Cintia shawl which I'm going to keep folded in half because my arms aren't that long. <laughs> you would take, need four of these guys. So with that uh, crochet along kicked off this afternoon, and it is a super fun pattern. I'm actually using a bright blue tiramisu, 
and it has kind of it goes from blue to blue green and it is really really pretty and I'm being the purple person that I am of course I always want to use purple first but honestly that blue is gorgeous so next going off camera here again this is a brand new kit I don't even have a sample of this yet it is so new <clears throat> excuse me this is the rainbow showers shawl it is $87.99 it comes with the printed pattern this was the Manos de Uruguay's um, LIS day pattern for 2019 and then it comes with two sets of the Fino minis and it utilizes all those colors it's a very long shawl and very very pretty so that is $87.99 for the pattern and the two sets of the Fino minis. This particular one is Flora and Clarissa. Clarissa has more muted colors. It has a tan, pink, cream, and blue. The Flora has more plant-like colors. It's got lots of greens and a couple blues. I am kind of in love with this blue color here. So that looks like a super, super fun pattern and I can't wait to make it. So $87.99 and next well i can't talk about crochet without talking about tunisian crochet teresa would never forgive me so tonight i'm featuring this shawl this is another tony lipsy shawl and it is called the loveland shawl and yes it is named after loveland just north of here loveland so this is a nice triangular shawl it uses two colors um, but about, I think, three of the main color and then two of the contrasting color. And if you look at it up close, you're going to say, Christiana, what are you talking about? That is not crochet. That is knit. Trust me, it is crochet. It is Tunisian crochet, and it's a Tunisian knit stitch. So it mimics the appearance of a, a knit fabric as opposed to a crocheted one. This color, I, I'm sorry to say this yarn was a limited a uh, limited time colorway so we don't have this particular colorway anymore however if you want to make this shawl it takes a DK weight yarn uh, the pattern is on Ravelry and it's the Loveland shawl spelled just like Loveland and I have a couple suggestions for yarn for this particular shawl I think it would be absolutely lovely out of the Erin Moore light this is by uh, the fiber company this is 80% wool, 10% silk, and 10% cashmere. It is very yummy yarn. I can't think of a better word to describe it, but yummy. Definitely hand wash only. You don't want to be putting this in the washer. So hand wash and lay flat to dry. There are 328 yards per skein, and they are $24.99. So I just pulled three colors. Um, this is Canigo Bay, which is a teal. And this is Liadin, and I apologize, I'm probably saying that wrong. It's L-I-A-D-A-N, and it is a very lovely gray. It's got kind of a, a textured ply to it, but I think the teal and the gray would look lovely together for this shawl. Or the gray and Sleeve Sunset, S-L-I-E-V-E, -E -E, which is a very lovely magenta. I think those two would look lovely together, so... If you want to go really crazy, you could put the pink and the teal together. <laughs> so uh, that is the Erin Moore Light by the Fiber Company. 328 yards, $24.99 per skein. And it is 80% wool, 10% silk, 10% cashmere. Oh, and get this, it is made in Ireland. And oh, I just want to make this into a pillow and lie on it. It's so soft and wonderful. Bye, Marianne. And another yarn that I think this would look lovely out of is the Farmer's Daughter Juicy D DK. Say that 10 times fast. This is $34 per skein. It is 100% superwash merino wool, 274 yards. I love this color, even though there is not a speck of purple in it. This is called Glacial Lake Missoula. And I just made a pair of socks out of this yarn and it is wonderful. It's got a creamy white base with teal in it and then it's got little speckles of some yellows, greens, 
There's even a tiny bit of magenta in there. And for a contrast color, this is juniper. So this is a more solid, more actually tonal color. And I think those two would look lovely together. If I were to make the Loveland shawl out of this, I'd probably make the juniper the main color and the Glacial Lake Missoula the contrast color. Or this color is called elk antler and it is kind of hard to see on camera. I do apologize for that. It's a very, very pale chocolate brown. And I think the Glacial Lake Missoula looks wonderful with it. Again, I'd probably use the more tonal color as the main color and then the speckled as the contrast. But in this case, I think speckled as the main and the elk antler as the contrast would also look amazing. So again, that is DK weight yarn. It's the Farmer's Daughter Juicy DK, 100% superwash merino wool, 274 yards for $34. Or you could go wild and crazy and use all three of them. That would look cool. So again, that would be my recommendation for the Tunisian Crocheted Loveland Shawl. This is my one and only Tunisian project that I have made to date, and hopefully one of these days, once I get some stuff done, I will do another Tunisian crochet project. This is a Tony Lipsy project. She also just released a book. I think it's called The Beginner's Guide to Tunisian Crochet or The Beginner Tunisian Crochet Handbook. Um, I have it at home. It's a wonderful book. So if you're interested in Tunisian, I recommend checking that guy out. Alrighty. Next, I have a class coming up called Groovy Grannies. And I brought my cheat sheet with me because I remember the date. I just don't remember the time. It is Thursday, March 17th at 6 to 7.30 p.m. It is a two, uh, two meeting class. So we meet on the 17th and then again a week later. And we're gonna go over two different styles of granny square. So this is just a basic granny square. And what I've done is I've backed it with a solid single crochet square that's the same size and made it into a hot pad or a trivet. And then I just did a little loop at the top so you can hang it from a hook. For this guy, I used the Cotton Supreme. Um, Honestly, I think cotton is the best material for hot pads, for washcloths, because it's, um, it's softer. If you're using it for a washcloth, it's more durable. Um, if you use anything with acrylic in it, the acrylic will melt if you put heat on it. So I would avoid acrylic for anything that's going to come in contact with anything hot, like a pan or a pot. So I used the Cotton Supreme. This is by our friends at Universal. This is a worsted weight yarn. It is $10.95 per hank, 100% cotton. And there are 180 yards here. And this is actually a fantastic cotton yarn. I know when we think of cotton, we tend to think of kind of rough and a little on the scratchy side. This stuff is actually super, super soft. This would actually make a wonderful garment that you would wear next to your skin. So great for people who have um, sensitivities to animal fibers. So this is the lavender color that I used in my hot pad. And unfortunately, we don't have the gray, but I think it would look awesome with this uh, color called daiquiri. So I love purple and green together. Or it would also look wonderful, I think, with the aqua. And then the daiquiri and the aqua would look fantastic together, too. So again, this guy, just a, a plain granny square that I backed with a single crochet square. Uh, if you're doing something like a hot pad or a trivet, you definitely want a double layer like that to absorb the heat. And then I just single crochet them together around the outside. And for the little loop on top, I did a chain. And then I went into the chain and just filled it in with single crochets until it looked full enough to be sturdy to hang from like a hook on your refrigerator. So the Cotton Supreme is $10.95 per hank. It is, again, a worsted weight yarn, 100% cotton, and there are 180 yards per hank. Okay, I promised you we were going to talk about the Alice Capelet, so here we go. <laughs> the Alice Capelet is what I'm wearing right now. 
this was designed for yarn crawl last year um, and I designed it so what was kind of going through my head when I designed it is it was summertime we were using bamboo and summertime here in Colorado it can get really really warm during the day and then at night it can get pretty chilly so I'm thinking I want something that I could still wear in the daytime but not overheat but that would be helpful to have around when it's evening and it's starting to get kind of chilly. So the cape look kind of came to mind. I thought, I love things that are multitaskers. So the cape look you can wear as a cowl and sorry, we are sold out of the purple colorway, but we do have the original colorway that we made the cape look out of. So it has kind of darts going down the shoulder. So what you can do, I'm getting, my electronic leash is catching me. So you can wear it just as a cowl during the daytime when it's a, a little bit warmer and you don't want to overheat. But at night when it starts to get chilly, you line the darts up with your shoulders and then you can pull the capelet down and you've got something to keep your shoulders warm. So this was the original colorway that I designed it in. Um, got a nice yellow. I love this orange because it's got a little bit of yellow undertone to it and then this wonderful burgundy color. So that colorway is called Old Town. The kits are $84.99. They do come with the printed pattern. Two full skeins of Theodora's Pearls oxenometer, oxenometer and a mini stain for the top part. So that is 100% bamboo fingering weight. Actually, excuse me, this is the DK weight of oxenometer. 100% bamboo. So that is the Old Town colorway, which is this guy right here. And then Jennifer from Theodora's Pearls put together a nice neutral, which I am very grateful for because if I, if I design it, I want lots and lots of colors. <laughs> but not everybody does, and that is okay. So this is called River Stones. And Jennifer put in this nice chocolate brown with, uh, I believe this color is called Walnut, and it's kind of a, a silvery undertone with pale browns and kind of a, a reddish brown throughout. And then we've got the creamy color mini for the collar. So again, that is River Stones. This is the Alice Capelet. These are $84.99 and they come with the yarn and the pattern. And I do apologize that the purple sold out, but I guess I'm not the only purple person <laughs> out there. So hooray for purple people. The last one I have to show you guys tonight, this is another one of my absolute favorite, favorite yarns and favorite, favorite projects. This is the flat iron singular shawl by Tony Lipsy. <laughs> and this is advanced beginner, beginner level kit, or excuse me, not kit, uh, project. This is a triangular shawl. It utilizes the single crochet stitch. And what's really cool about this is there's really no exact measurement to it. I know there are some in the pattern, but you can just keep crocheting and crocheting until you run out of, almost run out of yarn, because you need just a little bit here to transition into the next color. But in the very last block, you can just keep crocheting until you run out of yarn. So this is single crochets and it's kind of a boomerang triangle shape. And that's done by increasing at one side and then decreasing at the other side um, every few rows. And then she added in this very lovely lace detail at the edge. I just used a mini skein for this and you could definitely use just like leftovers from a project. So this is my personal flat iron shawl. This guy right here is the shop sample. So um, yeah, just, uh, and I love kind of doing a, a little bit of a contrasting color on the end, or if you've got bright colors throughout the shawl, doing a nice neutral in the lace pattern is really, really cool. Um, this yarn right here we no longer carry, but this is Malabrigo Sock. And this is Over the Moon Sock by Hummingbird Moon, which is what I'm going to show you now. Michelle just brought us, Michelle from Hummingbird Moon just brought in new yarn for us and she has four new colors or yeah, four new colors. And I wanted to show it off to you guys because I think these colors are fantastic. 
So first, this is Oracle. And Oracle has kind of this navy blue purplish base with little flecks of color through it. Oh, there's a hair on there. There's a little bit of purple. There's a little bit of green. And I can't wait to wind this into a cake because I bet it's going to look even better in the cake than it does in the hank. So this is Over the Moon Sock. It is 32.95 fingering weight. It is an 80-20 merino nylon blend, and there are 450 yards in a hank. You can get a pair of socks out of just one hank, especially if you have teeny tiny feet like me. This is another new color. This is called Embrace the Darkness. So, <laughs> hey, at least I didn't say unicorn farts. <laughs> Melanie's laughing at me. <laughs> Melanie was just telling me that she, oh, Ma Melanie, can you hit the OK button? I can't quite reach the phone. <laughs> Sorry, Instagram, we're having technical difficulties over here. <laughs> OK, so this is Embrace the Darkness, and it is a nice creamy white base. There's flecks of purple and yellow and green and black, and it is stunning. I love this yarn, and my mom loves Michelle's yarn, too. Mm -hmm. Mom actually used what Michelle. Does she love about it? What does mom love about it? Well, first of all, the colors. The color names are hilarious. They're fantastic. And they make great Chihuahua sweaters. Because <laughs> Chihuahuas get cold, so we got to keep them warm. We're very special Chihuahuas. Our Chihuahuas are very special, yes. This one is called Pumpkin Spice, and just the name made me want to buy it. It is half, or probably about two thirds black, and then a third orange. Mom says that she loves everything about Michelle's yarn, Melanie. Solid. Solid. <laughs> and I am actually using a similar yarn to make a sweater with um, out of the worsted weight. And it's really cool depending on um, the width of your project. It could have a striping effect. It could have just little bloops of color. So that is pumpkin spice. I think this would make an awesome, awesome pair of socks or a beautiful shawl. The last new color that she brought in, this is uh, the fingering weight version of what I'm using for my sweater, so I don't even have to look at the tag. I know this is called Haunted. So this is, again, about two-thirds black and about a third of this beautiful blue. Like turquoise? Yeah, and it's got little tiny flecks of almost a purpley blue in it. It, it kind of depends. Melanie just asked me how this yarn works up. It, it depends on how big your project is. If you were making a sock, I'd be willing to bet that this would have almost a striping effect. But if you're making a larger project, it's going to be like a big block of black and then a little fleck of blue. Okay. So uh, I'll have to bring in the sweater that I'm making. I'm, I'm using the worsted weight, but I'm using the same color. And it looks really, really awesome. I'm putting in some purposefully dropped stitches in it, so it's really cool. Oh. It, it's knit, sorry. <laughs> Don't be sorry, you're extremely skilled. But I, I'm definitely working on a lot of crocheted projects right now. <laughs> so that is the Over the Moon Sock by Hummingbird Moon, $32.95 per hank. There's 450 yards in this hank. And these are the four new colors. And I'm in love with all of them. <laughs> so... That is what we've got for you guys tonight. Um, be sure to, again, join in with the customer trunk show if you're a crocheter. Remember, you can bring in three items. Um, they have to be made from Longmont Yarn Shop yarn. If you're not able to publicly display your items here at the shop, we are doing a virtual show as well. Just email your photos to melanie at longmontyarn.com and tell us the name of the pattern, the name of the designer, where we can find the pattern which yarn you're using, and if you can also give us written permission to post your photos on social media, that would be wonderful. Oh, and I neglected to mention at the beginning, too, you get entered into a drawing for every item that you show, and we've got some amazing prizes, and I'm really, really excited about them and kind of jealous that I can't enter the drawing for them. Also, uh, we do have some more crochet classes coming up. Uh, we've got Groovy Grannies again. Um, that's March 17th and 24th from 6 to 7.30. That is a Thursday night. And then we have another Crochet 101 coming up. That one starts Thursday, 
March 31st, and we're expanding it to three, le uh, three meetings instead of just two so we can really clearly go over finishing techniques. So that will meet March 31st, April 7th, April 14th, and again, those are Thursday nights. Uh, the first one meets from 6 to 8, and the second two meet from uh, 6 to 7.30. And I'll be sure to continue to watch the website for any upcoming classes because we've got a couple other things in the works that just are not on the calendar yet. And be sure to join us March 12th in front of the shop to make beaded chain necklaces. And that's for everybody, all ages. If you've never picked up a hook before, that is just fine. We will show you what to do. Got a comment. Oh, hey, Doreen. Well, we're almost done, Doreen, so you're going to have to watch this again on... on replay so and we've got the facebook live videos with either me or andy every wednesday morning at 10 30 if you can't make the live they will be on our youtube channel as soon as we sign off and i hope you can join us on march 30th because both andy and i will be there and we will be answering questions it's an ask me anything period as long as it's crochet related <laughs> got to clarify that if you're not able to make it to the live but have a question you want answered Go ahead and email it directly to me. It's Christiana at longmontyarn.com and I will make sure that your question gets added into the Facebook Live. And if you're not able to make the live, you can watch watch it on YouTube. And that's the raffle drawing day too. That is all, yeah, March 30th is also the um, raffle drawing day. And we've got lots of really cool prizes. And in fact, I just got some from uh, Knitting Fever and they are really, really cool. So that is what we've got for you this week, and we hope to see you next week. For those of you here in the Longmont area, please stay warm and please stay safe for everybody.